You had mentioned about bringing in little pellets from the United States. So in essence, would it make sense that in order to buy American, we have to buy American first to bring it to Canada to indeed turn around and sell it back to the United States? Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And that's why I said we feel we buy American all day long. Uh, most, most of the pellets come from the United States. And uh, what we do is we convert it into, uh, you know, useful construction materials. Um, it would seem to me that uh, Canada should have an exemption to buy America, like we did have back in 2010. I figure, uh, you know, if Harper could do it with Obama, Trudeau should be able to do it with Biden. They're more ideologically congruent. It's in America's best interest. And I think, uh, I think, uh, um, you know, if we were, if they were not to give us an exemption, uh, you know, it would be terrible if we had to look elsewhere for our raw material. Understand. And, and through you again, Mr. Chair, uh, back to the same witness, please. So I think majority of us around this, this uh, table will agree that, um, the chance for recovery, recovery, COVID-19 recovery specifically, is going to be through infrastructure. And the one thing that's that we know for sure is our sewers, our drinking water, all the things that really require pipe, that is not going away. As a matter of fact, we're going to need more and more of it all the time. And so the 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 opportunity here to really work with our our uh, greatest trading partner, the United States of America, what what kind of an impact would it be? If uh, I mean to to our United States friends, if your company couldn't export to them under fair trading uh, role models, well, they they'd lose uh, business. Quite frankly, um, uh, there is a shortage of pipe in the United States right now. Canada always has served historically as a uh, relief valve for their economy when their economy got too hot. Uh, and uh, and uh, we've always served a useful purpose in that in in that regard. If we cannot ship the finished pipe back into the United States, they will have to buy from somewhere else, and they'll probably be buying from China. And I can't see how that's better for you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you again to the same witness. I'm sorry to pick on you, sir, but you really intrigued me there. Um, so, what specifically can this committee do to help uh, to help your industry, but to help? Of course, Canada and this this whole relation is there, is there something very specific that you could you could uh, perhaps share with this committee? Well, um, uh, I think um, uh, what we really should be doing is talking with USTR, uh, making sure that the lines of communication are open. Uh, back in 2009, 2010, when we were cut out the first time, uh, Prime Minister Harper invited all U.S. manufacturers that had plants in Canada to the Canadian embassy. And then he had a little discussion with them. He said to them, and they were, by the way, having a difficult time shipping their product back that they made in Canada back into the United States. And he made it clear that that was an unintended consequence of Buy America. And he asked them all to go back to President Obama to tell them about the unintended consequences and the damage it was doing to American companies. And that was very effective. Uh, uh, a lot of American companies ship into Canada. If we started doing the same to them as they did to us, I think they'd run back to their congressmen and senators right away and say, hey, we got to fix this problem because, quite frankly, they need our markets, they want our markets, and, uh, and uh, reciprocal trade is the core of free and fair trade. Thank you. Mr. Chair, how much time left, please, sir? Uh a minute, 45 seconds. Oh, excellent. Wow, this is awesome. Um, just going back uh, to the same witness, please, Mr. Sabat. So I'm kind of intrigued on those little pellets. Is there any uh, opportunity for uh, to, to perhaps purchase from a Canadian supplier, or does it have to be uh, purchased through uh, United States suppliers? In the past, we have bought from a Canadian supplier based in Niagara Falls, Ontario. Um, uh, there are only four or five major resin suppliers in North America. Uh, and uh, it's just uh, over the last 30 years, uh, our, our supply chains have uh, evolved in such a way that we're buying from the Americans right now. And quite frankly, right now, uh, there is a shortage of, uh, of pellets in the marketplace. Uh, so our existing supply chains are very important. We're sort of stuck with them right now. Certainly, uh, if we were ever to um, 
develop some of our resources uh, here in Canada, we'd be very amenable to buying, uh, you know, more Canadian goods. In the meantime, uh, we have to resort to, uh, you know, alternate uh, suppliers, uh, even in Europe, for example. Thank you. 30, 30 seconds, Mr. Lewis, question and answer, please. 30 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just final thought. Uh, I was really intrigued when he had mentioned about um, removing lead from our water lines. And I know that uh, in Flint, Michigan, there was a major issue there, continues to be. Just wondered on, um, I do believe, sir, that you had mentioned it was kind of Canadian technology and, and what that what, what this relationship continues to be for, uh, for the United States. Short answer, Mr. Sabat, please. Uh, the mayor of Burton, uh, Paula Zelenko, a uh, great lady, did uh, extraordinary research on what was the best option for them moving forward. Flint has moved in this direction, too. If you recall years ago, uh, they had a lead problem. They're going this way, too. Canadian solutions for American problems. I think that's a great example.